In this video, I'll use this service kit to replace the clamps and rubber hoses within this 912 IS fuel pump assembly so that it complies with a five-year rubber replacement program. This video is for demonstration purposes only. Official installation instructions are given in Service Instruction SI 912I015. You can download a copy of this service instruction by clicking on Technical Documentation at flyrotax.com. Maintenance facilities may have their own task sheets created for this procedure. It's recommended that this procedure be completed by a Rotax distributor, an authorized service center, or an IRMT with heavy maintenance training. The fuel pump assembly should be removed from the aircraft for servicing. Use a wrench to back up the fuel pump fittings and remove the fuel lines. Plug the aircraft's disconnected fuel lines with appropriate protective covers to avoid contamination. Be sure to capture and properly dispose of any residual fuel. Before completely disassembling the fuel pump assembly, have your copy of the 912 IS Heavy Maintenance Manual open to Chapter 73-10-00. Digital photos of the assembly can also be very helpful. Remove the four M5 by 12 bolts and remove the fuel pump assembly cover. Remove the four M6 nuts from the rear mounting studs and remove the rear assembly housing. Inspect the front and rear housings as well as the pump support bracket for any wear, cracks or corrosion and replace any damaged parts. Now with the fuel pumps and fuel rail assembly on the bench, we have easy access to remove the clamps and replace the rubber hoses. The clamps used on the rubber hoses are Otiker style crimp clamps, sometimes referred to as ear style clamps. To remove the clamps, use a thin flat blade screwdriver or slim side cutter pliers. Find the tail of the clamp and pry up to break free these little latches and the clamp will open up and can be easily removed. To avoid confusion in reassembly, the hoses can be replaced in sections. I'll begin by removing the forfeiting fuel rail. Remove all eight clamps and remove the fuel rail from the pumps and discard the used clamps and rubber hoses. Take care not to damage any of the fittings when removing the old hoses. Do not use a knife or a screwdriver to remove. Inspect the fittings on the fuel pumps, check valves, and rigid lines. If there's any damage or longitudinal scratches or cuts, the component must be replaced. Mark down the serial numbers of the original fuel pumps and new serial number if a fuel pump is replaced. In the service kit, you'll find two different sizes of hose and three different sizes of clamps. There are larger clamps supplied if you need to remove the fuel pumps from the rear bracket. However, I find it easier to leave the pumps attached to the rear bracket. It makes lining everything up to fit inside the housing a little simpler. Place the larger diameter hose onto the inlet side of the auxiliary pump and slide over two of the medium sized clamps. Place the smaller diameter hose length onto the outlet side of the main pump, the outlet side of the main check valve, and the inlet side of the auxiliary check valve, and slip on six smaller size clamps. Now we can reinstall the four fitting fuel rail. You'll notice that there's one fitting larger than the others. This will correspond with the inlet of the auxiliary fuel pump. We'll leave the clamps loose at this point so that we don't get confused between which clamps have been crimped. Also, this allows us to make slight adjustments to ensure that the pumps and fuel rails fit back into the assembly housing. Repeat the procedure to replace the hoses and clamps on the fuel inlet rigid line and the fuel outlet line. 
The inlet and the outlet fuel rails have different size hose connections. Ensure that they don't get mixed up. Now that we have all new hoses and clamps in place, rotate the clamps so that all of the ears are facing directly upwards. Place the fuel pumps and rails temporarily into the back housing, and adjust the connections and hoses so that everything fits in without obstruction. Then carefully remove the assembly from the back housing for easier crimping of the clamps. Before we permanently crimp all of the clamps, have one last look to ensure that the fuel pumps and the check valves are properly oriented, referencing the heavy maintenance manual, installation manual, or your digital photographs. There are several tools on the market designed specifically for crimping these Otaker or ear style clamps. These crimping pliers are made by Nipex, part number 1099. They have two sets of jaws that allow either crimping straight on or sideways, which can be helpful if there are clearance issues. There are also automotive style crimping clamps designed for use on universal joint boots. These ones are made by Bluepoint, part number YA3080. These pliers have an integrated mechanism to keep the ear flat while crimping. Before crimping each clamp, place the clamp approximately 1.5 millimeters from the edge of the hose. Make sure the clamp sits on the flat of the fitting and is not resting on the barb. Ensure that all clamps have been securely crimped. Now before we put this back into the housing, we need to check our work and make sure that there are no leaks. Plug the fuel outlet and connect the fuel pump inlet to a differential pressure tester. This is the same differential gauge used to check your cylinder compression. The fuel pumps remain unpowered for this test. Connect the differential gauge to an air compressor and pressurize the fuel pump assembly with 6 bar or 87 psi. If all connections have been securely crimped, we should see no pressure loss. Cover the hose connections with a non-corrosive leak detection solution, such as CRC Eco Leak Finder. If a leak is present, it will show up as bubbles. If bubbles are detected at a connection, its clamp must be removed and replaced. An extra clamp of each size is provided in the service kit. Once a successful leakage test is complete, clean up the leak check solution and place the assembly back into the rear housing. Place the four M6 nuts onto the studs and torque them to 10 newton meters or 90 inch pounds. With the top cover removed, place the fuel pump assembly back into the aircraft and connect the fuel lines and power connectors. Replacement grommets for the power connector wires are supplied in the service kit. Turn the aircraft's fuel system on and turn on power to both pumps. Inspect all hoses and clamps for any fuel leaks. Check that normal fuel pressure is achieved and that each fuel pump functions independently. Reinstall the fuel pump assembly cover and perform an engine test run and a final leak check. A log entry can now be made stating that the fuel pump assembly 5-year rubber replacement has been completed using the Rotax service kit part number 889537. Include the serial numbers of the two fuel pumps within the assembly. You can find other videos on the official Rotax Aircraft Engines YouTube channel, Fly Rotax. Thank you.